Hey guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Rabb, and a special welcome to all my education majors. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 highest paying jobs for education majors. And I am gonna go from lowest to highest paying, but I encourage you not to go to number one right away because I want you to listen to all the ones in between because somewhere in here, you may find something that piques your interest that you may wanna look a bit more into. Because remember, salary isn't the most important thing. So without further ado, let's jump into these 10 and let's start talking about the highest paying jobs for education majors. And if you're new here, my name's Calvin Rabb. I make videos all about personal finance and the job market. So if you're interested in anything like that, I would love it if you would subscribe. Coming in at number 10 is a training manager making over $66,000 per year. So a training manager, as the name kind of suggests, is gonna be someone that is in charge of training the employees of a specific company, or maybe you work for a third party company that trains employees. And you're gonna be doing so much more than just training them some particular skill. You may also be doing some research into that company to seeing what skills do these employees lack that would help them or more so help the company altogether, make it run more efficiently. So you will be doing some research there and then also using your education skills to teach them those skills in such a way that allows them to kind of put their best foot forward and get the most work done and learn it in an efficient way. So training manager may be something that you wanna look into. Number nine is an after school program director. And this person's gonna be making over $76,000 per year. So it is kind of in the name what you're gonna be doing here, but you're gonna be coming up with different programs for students that are in the after school program. So this will be looking at, you know, what do you think these kids need to learn, but also taking into consideration what they like you know what do they enjoy coming up with different programs for different personalities or different people or different kids like different things and trying to make it as enjoying as possible you know back when I was in grade school I knew a lot of the after school program directors and different people that worked in the program they're all really cool people and their whole goal you know was helping these kids have as much fun as they can while learning important concepts and you are going to be just Take into consideration, you are gonna to have to do a lot of, you know, dealing with different personalities and different conflicts and different things like that. You know, not all kids will necessarily get along, but it can be a very rewarding job and you will play a very important role in these kids' lives. Job number eight is that of a lobbyist. And here, a lobbyist would be making base average salary over $78,000. And all these salaries, for the most part, are gonna be base average salary without any benefits or anything like that. So a lobbyist, what you're gonna be doing here is you're likely gonna be working for a company. Sometimes they're public, sometimes they're private. And you are gonna be working to try and get legislation passed that is in favor of that company. So you're gonna be speaking with different elected officials officials, different groups, and different people who have political power that are making decisions that affect that company. And you are going to be arguing on behalf of that company to try and get legislation passed that does help them. You know, you are lobbying for that specific company. Coming in at number seven is a standardized test developer making over $83,000 base average salary per year. Now this one is in the name what you're gonna be doing, but you are gonna be developing and creating these standardized tests. You know, us students always think, oh, they just pop out of thin air. No, they don't. They are created by teams of these test developers that take into consideration, you know, looking at the curriculum, what skills do these students have, what should they have and how can we test that in such a way that it's fair across the table and they will take in just there's a lot of different like psychological elements that go in here and from your education courses you've probably made a lot of different course and different programs uh, different programs that are out there that you've probably created yourself and that's really what you would be doing here now this is an interesting position in that I don't know what it's going to do in the future because a lot of schools are starting to drop those big standardized tests, you know, the SAT and ACT. For instance, I go to UCLA and UCLA, uh, in fact, I think most of, if not the entire UC system, uh, UCLA was one of the first ones to do it, but they dropped ACT and SAT from their admissions requirements in that, you know, usually when you apply, uh, when I applied the first time, I had to go and send them my SAT scores and things like that, but they're now dropping that. So it's interesting to see where this is gonna go, how it's gonna affect college admissions, and it's an interesting thing that I'm excited to see what happens. 
Coming in at number six is an academic dean making over $85,000 per year base average salary. So an academic dean, and I'm sure if you've gone through any type of school, whether it be K through 12 or even uh, you went to university or anything like that, then you've probably at least seen or understood the job of an academic dean. But they are in charge of all things academic. So they are in charge of the budget, you know, seeing which department needs more money. You know, is this underfunded? Uh, uh, how much money do they have? How much do they need to actually run? Uh, they'll be in charge of enforcing, of course, the rules and dealing with any academic issues at their particular education institution. And it's a very important job. It's a very prestigious one, especially at UCLA. You know, the academic dean is very important because you are in charge of academics. And at an academic institution, if you're in charge of academics, you're in charge of the core purpose of why kids are there. So being an academic dean is something that is pretty prestigious and it is a very important position and there's a lot that goes into it. You're gonna have to make a lot of different decisions about the future of academics and you're gonna be looking at the school's plan and seeing are we in line with that. Coming in at number five is an assistant principal making over $86,000 per year. So an assistant principal is gonna take on a lot of the duties and look a lot like a principal in the actions that this person is gonna do. But mainly an uh, assistant principal is gonna be in charge of really just enforcing the rules and guidelines. And not only will they be in charge of enforcing them, but they will also be creating these different rules, you know, talking to different board members and in kind of connection with the principal, coming up with different rules that they believe are best for that particular academic institution and making sure that everything is carried out properly, you know, making sure that the mission of that school is carried out in such a way that it is in, in line with its overall mission. Coming in at number four, and after saying assistant principal, your mind probably went to, at some point he's probably gonna say principal. And you are right, because we're gonna say it right now. So number four is principal. And we break through that $100,000 barrier with an average salary, average base salary of now $106,000. So a principal at a very high level is just the head of the administrative team at a certain school. And they are, being in charge of the administrative team means that you juggle a lot of different balls here. You know, you are going to be in charge of overseeing not only, you know, making sure all the rules are being brought out or not just making sure the rules are enforced, but you're going to be in charge of all the different parts of the academic institution. You know, all the different areas of study, whether it be, you know, back in grade school, history and math, and the same thing can go for larger institutions. But you are now in charge of everything, making things, making sure things like sports are running smoothly. And a lot of times you're going to be just dealing with different fires, you know, dealing with different issues that come up. And oftentimes you are the final say. So you have to be a very good business person, a very good critical thinker, someone that is very patient and understanding, but you can get a lot of different personalities clashing at school, and the job can sometimes be a lot of a, a big headache, but you are playing an unbelievably important role in so many lives. It's very rewarding, and you just grow a very close relationship with that school. And oftentimes, whenever I've had professors leave, they're always quite emotional about it because you get very, you're so close with that school, and I always, I've had the good fortune of having a lot of great principals in my time and they've all been very, very interesting and very fascinating and smart people. Coming in at number three is gonna be a school superintendent and this is gonna be making about $118,000 base average salary. And one thing that I do wanna mention that I haven't been mentioning for the past few is when I talked about assistant principal, principal, and now school superintendent, oftentimes more than a bachelor's degree is required. So sometimes you'll see a few instances where they may just have a bachelor's degree, but for the most part, most of them go and get master's degree. So with a lot of these jobs, you're gonna look at, is it accessible from a bachelor's perspective or do I have to go and further my studies and get a kind of a higher degree? So you're gonna to wanna to look into that. Oftentimes, even if it's open to just bachelors, you may need to get a master's in order to make yourself competitive because there's not oftentimes a ton of these jobs. But let me get back to the school superintendent. So a school superintendent is gonna be in charge of a particular school district. So principal is more so of a school. Now you're in charge of an entire district. And now you're in charge of making sure the schools are all running efficiently. You know, there will be different issues
issues that come up at different schools and you got to make sure that those are all settled and kind of handled properly. You're also going to be dealing a lot with finances. So whenever I read like in the paper about school superintendents or different things that they're discussing, it's oftentimes about money. And that's just because they are very much so in charge of where that money goes, how it's going to be spent. And that is oftentimes a tough issue for a lot of people. So this is definitely something that your education degree would help with. You know, you got to work with a lot of people and you got to understand the basics of what goes into proper education. Coming at number two is a recreation director and they're going to be making over $121,000 per year. So a recreation director, what they'll do is, it's also kind of the name, but you often must be working for like a big park or big organization, uh, sometimes public, sometimes private, and you're going to be coming up with different activities that they could do, you know, planning and implementing different recreational activities for that particular park and just kind of organizing where the money will go, where it's going to be spent. You'll be dealing with a lot of hiring and subsequently firing of different people and just making sure that everything runs smoothly and just making sure that there are programs and plans in place, that all the times are working properly and that it's what the people want, meaning, you know, maybe you're working for or in a specific community and they want this particular thing. You got to kind of juggle that, take that into consideration when making the budget, where things are going to go and just make sure that everyone is kind of enjoying themselves and as many people are happy as possible. And sometimes if you're working at a park, you may got to deal with different sports leagues coming in and it's a pretty big job. And there's a lot of different things that you got to consider and a lot of moving parts. Number one is a chief academic officer, and this person will be making over $133,000 base average salary. So what this person is going to be doing is they're going to be in charge of all things academics at the particular institution that they work at. So maybe they're on the board of directors at a particular college, or maybe they're in charge of a certain K through 12 school. You know, this can go up through all the ranks of education. But what you're going to be doing here is you're in charge of all things academics. So you're going to be spending a a lot of time on the curriculum you know every single year looking back and being critical in the curriculum seeing you know what went well what didn't go so well and making changes tweaking it there you know maybe there are different additions to the curriculum that you know this specific major now has to have this specific skill and if there are big fundamental changes you know like when common core really shook things up then this is something that a chief academic officer would definitely have to take into consideration and they also going to work on planning different curriculums and courses in such a way that they see it fitting the particular job market or the mission of the school. And there's a lot that goes in here, but you are in charge of what these students learn. So you are one of the most important people in all of academics. And because of that, it is a pretty high paying job as well. All right, so that will wrap it up. Those are the 10 highest paying jobs that I see for education majors. But I now want to hear from you. You know, is there a job that I missed or was a salary really off in this? You know, I tried to do as much research as possible, but if there's something that I missed, then I would love it if you just let me know in the comments below, you know, maybe adding on if there's different education requirements. You know, I know for chief academic officer, I know a, most of them and sometimes it's just required that you have to have a master's degree of some sort. So I, di I didn't add that, but I just thought I'd add it right now. You know, or are there more jobs open to maybe just a bachelor's degree in education? And there's a lot here. I think there are so many more jobs within academics that people don't really realize. You know, when people think of an education major, oftentimes they'll just jump to, oh, they want to be a teacher. And that's oftentimes that can be true. You know, a lot of people that I know that are education majors are actually now becoming teachers. But for the most part, like there are so many other jobs that you can get within academics and in general and in the world at large because education, you learn how to teach people. And that is something that everyone needs in every facet of business and life altogether. You know, we don't improve unless we are learning and part of learning is the teaching aspect. So it's very important. I would just love to talk about all this in the comments down below with you guys. So, but altogether that will wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. I truly 
truly appreciate it. And if you are new here, my name is Calvin Rabb. Here I make videos all about personal finance and the job market. So if you're interested in that at all, I would love it if you would subscribe. Hit that little subscribe button down there. And I'd also love it if you'd like this video, because if you do that, then I know that people are interested in this topic and I'll make more videos just about this. So all in all, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And as always, my name is Calvin Rabb and I'll see you soon. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. So I'm gonna move to the corner of your screen here. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you are gonna see my most recent video. And if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you are gonna see a video that YouTube and I each think that you would like. And if you haven't yet, you can hit my face right here and subscribe. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb, and I'll see you soon.